Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here, um, or for those ones who is watching the recording. It's spring. Spring is coming. It's always nice um, feeling. Uh, today we are doing a painting of a German painter. His name is Rudolf Jan, and the painting's name is Spring. Yeah. I've chosen today's, this is a bit like half abstract um, painting, because I also wanted to experiment with you. How is it to, to paint abstract art? So is it easy? Is it hard? Yes, because often we, we see something and we say, ah, that's so easy. I mean, anyone can do it while it's like hanging in the museum. Um, so we, we're gonna explore, is it, like this, is it easy or is it hard? What's the story with abstract art? So it's the first point. The second, I would um, also experiment today. So not painting on typical, let's say rectangular paper, but we are doing, I'm gonna do the square. Yeah, so it's also just a bit like experiment because if you always take the same paper, then you all also get Kind of the same result. So today I'm just gonna cut. Yeah, I'm gonna measure. Okay, how much I have one side, and then I'm gonna just measure. If you don't want to do this, it's up to you. It's really the square is not a must. Yeah, the square is. Um, uh, yeah, for example, I know Lana she's painting an album, and of course, if you don't want to, uh, you don't want to like cut the paper. You can actually do it just with um, tape. Yeah, so you can just tape like a bit uh, differently. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I haven't prepared the paper before because just I wanted to show you and um, it's all easy. And now I'm also gonna, um, yeah, put the tape. And remember, you can also kind of say, okay, how much tape I'm putting. So like this, I also can uh, play how big is my frame. Yeah, and sometimes I really like doing like bigger frames. It looks a bit more stylish maybe. Yeah. So this is little tricks. You can play around and um, then you can have. You know, Right. Okay. Yeah, oh, uh -huh. I see Audrey getting ready. She's also wearing a red hat today. <laughs> and yeah, and then of course we're gonna start with pencil. So we're gonna do the um, uh, all those rectangles. Yeah, uh, and then of course you don't need to copy as they are here. So we are, you know, taking these famous paintings just for uh, inspiration. Uh, we analyze, we see how the painter did it. But of course, we, we try to do our own stuff, change a bit, and yeah, later we can do a bit the, maybe the trees, put them or not, put something else if you want, put the house. Uh, um, but today it will be also about so studying the shapes. So I would, um, again, you can stay in uh, rectangular shapes. Maybe you want somewhere to add a, a curve, why not? It can be also something breakable, maybe a diagonal. Yeah, you remember diagonals also is a strong thing. So um, yeah, this is what we're going to start with. Just playing with uh, shapes uh, on our paper. You can use a ruler, why not? Yeah, um, if, if it's easier, you can go just with a hand. So play, play on your paper with all the different shapes. Yeah, so now it's the shapes, then will be uh, um, the colors. Yeah? You can start maybe with something uh, just like 
what you have a feeling to maybe it's something simple no? i'm not uh, using roller i think it's also kind of feels a bit more nice uh, when it's yeah then i can go like i can put some shapes behind yeah later i can also like maybe you know erase something so just the way you like it feels to you know um so in um, in abstract art it's really no right and wrong you know think maybe some some of them are smaller some of them are bigger yeah? again maybe a curvy line yeah maybe something um why not i'm going to put one so you see and um if you like it you can do it um you can always raise yeah so just playing around mm -hmm. and of course we're all gonna get different drawings and we're gonna also see um how um yeah easy how it is audrey you have a question go ahead of course It wasn't a question. It was an idea. <gasps> tell me, tell me. What if we like like triangles? Triangles can make make squares and cubes. Fantastic I'm just gonna idea. make two cubes. Very good idea. I'm straight away. And use triangles. Cool. Very nice. I already used it. Your idea. I already have a diagonal line. Because remember, yes, diagonal lines, it's something strong. So it's something we like give the direction for the viewer to look. So it's um huh? definitely I'm just making a kind of illusion. Ah, so interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah some some like shapes can go inside the other shape yeah it's also like bigger smaller it's really um I'm just gonna make a little oval. Also, yeah, maybe it's gonna be like a symbol of the lake or whatever. Yeah, or um, yes, yeah. So it's really a free game with geometrical shapes. Um, and then the next one will be the colors. Okay, what do I think? What should I add? Oh yeah, let, let's uh, think what other shapes. So we have circle. It can be oval. Maybe you have something like longer oval. Huh? Um, I didn't add a rectangle, so. Nice, yeah. Then can be the rectangle can be like very narrow, so very tiny. Yeah, or it can be more squarey. And then you can play also that one goes into another. Yeah, so or like over going on top and yeah here also stripes let's say let's take a look yeah he had used also some stripes that's basically also just a like rectangle but give some of course we can later also add a bit with color so now we have like the base but later if you feel too we add on top like the the way we want and yeah so like okay i'm gonna add the stripes here so 
I'm just gonna make some life like light pencil around mm -hmm. the shape. I found my graffiti pencils. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, it's um, you can do like maybe a frame, like like double line somewhere, huh? Or something. So that's really um. Okay, I'm just gonna lighten up. Mm -hmm. It's actually a bit hard because mine is fastly erasing. Yep. So aren't you ready or don't go on? Yeah, so take your time to finish all your figures. It's um uh, um it's a bit also like meditating. No rush, you put one, then you think. Like where your hand is moving, where you, you have a feeling, yeah? Um, I have 12 graffiti pencils. Uh -huh. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you, uh, actually, I think I'm going to add some little heart as the floor. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, so while you finish all your shapes, uh, and remember, you can also add afterwards, once you have colors there, it's also going to be like easier to feel, okay, do I want some more, some spots? But today we're also going to yeah, talk and remember uh, the color wheel. Yeah, it's a classical theory, but it's always good just to... Um, You know, always like the classical theory is always good to to practice again and again. So, um, what the color wheel is about? It's about um, how colors, you know, are connecting one to each other. Uh, so basically, the theory is that we have three primary colors. Yeah, that is yellow, blue, and red. They're called primary because first of all, you can't get them by mixing other colors. But with these three, you can get all the rest. So basically you can go to the shop and just buy blue, yellow and red, and here you go. You can, uh, so instead of the uh, box like this, you get three and, and you work, but of course, just for practical reasons, we go and we have all those um, uh, tones because it's just uh, easier, yeah? Because then I don't need to spend so much time mixing to get, let's say, uh, I don't know, emerald green, yeah? Because to get this, then I need to mix blue and yellow, but then I need to play with um, amount, how much blue, how much yellow, till I get to this uh, color. So what's this, the second thing about color wheel is um, remembering the three pairs. And the three pairs are uh, blue and orange. So like this color is sitting the opposite. The second pair is red and green. Yes. And then it's purple and yellow. Yellow and yellow. Exactly. Yeah. So it's also like the basic theory. And why, how, how it's good like to remember those and to use them because these colors, they look good when they are close to each other. Yeah. If I'm going to mix them, if I'm going to mix green and red, I'm going to get just like um, a brown color. Yeah, it's going to be just a mess. But if I put them together, like one next to another, yeah, so I put, then they look nice together. Then, then, in a way, um, if I have lots of green and I put a little bit of red, like the green looks more greener. Yeah. And then we have the same story with blue and orange. Oh, I don't have here purple. Okay. Purple we get by mixing <laughs> uh, this, this red two. And blue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Red, blue, and then I have a purple. Um, so please keep in mind, yeah, this wheel. So we use we can use the opposite colors, but we can also use the colors that are like standing 
close to each other. So orange looks good with yellow. Now let's say the red looks also good with purple, yeah? green and blue, they're also matching. So here's like will be a little um, uh, helper to you. And then we just start um, painting. Yeah, so we take our palette. Question. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Audrey, yeah, go ahead. So um, I found the box of the graffiti pencils too, and below like the pencils, there were like some kind of like signs. I just, mm -hmm. I just don't know what they mean. And what kind of signs is it? What what it says? It's 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 mostly like two, uh, and then like. Mm. Is it the the mom? B1, 5, B1, M, M5, B. Okay, so we, we're gonna, I'm gonna explain you now. So you have a box of pencils and then each pencil has this number. It can have... Two, H, H, yeah, perfectly. Yeah, guys, I got, I got your question. So I'm gonna just quickly explain it. Um, this so one is used... Like so I'm, I'm telling you now, Christopher, okay, what it means. So pencils, they have basically just, you can have letter H or letter B. And this means how uh, soft or hard is the pencil. And I'm going to show you now example with the paper. Yeah, so let's say H stands for hard. So these are like, when I'm drawing, it's very light, it's hard, and it's almost scratching my paper. And then the middle, so it will be like 2H. Then HB is like the middle, and then we get B2 or like 2B, whatever. Uh, it can be like 3, 4B, can be 6. It can be like even till 9B. So for example, here I have 7B, and it's oh. very soft, and look how, how dark it is, yeah? So, um, and this is the difference. And this is used a lot when you draw, when you do the um, pencil drawings, when you do port a, or something like, with pencil. And like HB to B is like medium, you know? You start with this, and if you need darker, yeah, you go. Uh, you can try, you can take them from your box and you can just try how they uh, how they're doing on the paper, but and you're gonna like do it. below the uh, numbers and letters. Uh, there, are, like I'm gonna send you in your chat. There's something like this. Okay, below. I'm gonna uh, take a look. Yeah, let's take uh, first ah two zero. So, uh, and there's like uh, and there's like little mm -M underneath. Oh, that means m millimeters. Okay, like, then I understand. Yeah, then it's also like um, especially it comes for the mechanical pencils. You know the pencils. Then you can just like um, it can have the like with with the pen sometimes. You know we we can have. Let's say if I have here. So uh, it can be like the thickness, yeah? And if it's the pencil um, meant for, you know, like architectural drawings, then it can also be the thickness. But, um, you know, there is no mystery. Just try them, try, and you're gonna feel how each pencil is um, is doing. Yeah. Um, for uh, what we're doing here, any pencil works. Take whatever you, you like. Um, but when you do the drawings, uh, so I'm going to see if I'm going to have some example quickly. So let's say if you're doing the portraits, you say here I have a portrait, then it's important. Then it's important you do the, um, the softer, the, yeah, the harder. So it's like just... Uh, so for this painting, uh, what would be like the most... Uh, Let's say HB is good because HB is the middle. Because if I take, let's say, 7B, it's going to be 
too dirty, you know, because it's too soft, it's too dark. Yeah? So just HB is always the middle, the classical. So um, have it and um, yeah. Cool. Thanks for the question. Of course, it's um, always ask anything with materials uh, to, be, okay. to be clear. Yeah. yeah. Um, all righty. So now comes the question. Okay. We have all our shapes. We have our yes. colors. Well, like, yes. how should I start? Should I start with what color should I start? Um, I think you should start with ultramarine. It's a good color. <laughs> Interesting choice. Yeah. So one way is definitely you can start with um, your favorite color. Why not? Yeah. Um, something, for example, in general, if you think about paints, it's good to start from lighter tones and then you go to darker. Yeah, because it's just the way easier, like the brush, the water. Um, it's easier to paint on top of the light color yeah so if i put now too much yellow and then it's like mm, then i can easily go on top with blue with green yeah but i can't do the opposite if i put now too much blue and then i say oh okay actually i want there to be something um orangey yellowish then i need to put like white on top wait till it's dry and then i can put the the color so you know, I like so much. I accidentally blue put on. Yeah, but it's all what fine. Drop, drop. Yeah. So remember, there is no right and wrong in um in abstract I'm art. A lot of. I'm just yeah. drawing a lot of triangles and other shapes. And other shapes. And some trees, because you can see on the drawing, you can see some trees. As well, yes. Um, my idea was to add them maybe in the end also, because then I already have the feeling. But um, also what I would suggest. So um, you can go by putting, let's say, one color and then the other. But like if, a, you, if you have them, you can also... I have a like... giant maze. I have like a giant maze. Nice, yeah. But you can also, what I suggest, you create a palette. A palette, what means? Then maybe I don't want to use all of this. And I play a bit around. So I say, okay, do I want more greenish? I really, I really like, like when you draw like a triangle or a square, then you can like draw from the both angles like lines. And then it's like from the upper to the lower and there are like infinite lines which you can draw nice yeah you can prolong definitely the, the triangles make the line longer and it so uh, then like to recap a bit how to start it with uh, colors so one way just go with your favorite color put it and just go by the feeling that's like one way the other way you can start in the classical way of painting. You start with light tones and then you go to the dark ones like later. Yeah. That's so, really sorry, but my favorite ones. Yeah. Um it the other way. Like, yeah, let's say the third. The third way would be when you create like your palette. So you choose the colors before you say, okay, let's say I'm not gonna use red, I'm just gonna use. I don't know, yellowishy green. Yeah, maybe a little bit of blue, and that's I it. Like yeah, so I'm limiting. And actually, it's very um, good also to limit your palette. What means to limit? It says, I, I, just... I don't take everything, I take just down. Yeah. I really like when you like, um, you know, like you have like, I don't know, like a giant bread and like a very long bread precisely. And then you slice it like in the same parts. I like it to do it when I'm drawing. Like it's kind of like from a big rectangle, we come to 
little squares. I understand. Yeah. Very good. Actually, you you commented. Thank you, uh, Christopher. So I would say the fourth method how we can start our uh, painting is the association. So it's not only the rectangles here. So we said, okay, the spring, spring is our topic. You can think, okay, what colors of spring are to me? Is spring to me more uh, yellowish or more browny or more greenish? Yeah, because- I know what my favorite tone is. It's very, very, very like pink, like on the flowers and pink. Mm-hmm, very nice, yeah. Um, there's four seeds and apple tree. <laughs> cool. But I don't have like, uh... Yeah. So, and I advise you not to rush. And let's say really when you put not. one color, you kind I of really like go by the feeling and you say, okay, which, uh, which color I feel can be next. Um, yeah. And we start slowly. I figured out how to draw on my graffiti pencil so lightly, like brightly, more like. Uh, can can you see on the camera like on the end of the pencil there was like this black? Yeah. Okay. And it's like meant for drawing too. It's like from the other side. Mm -hmm. I can show you how it draw like this line. Draw the black. Yeah, okay, very nice. Aha, uh -huh, I see, okay. It's very smooth, I like that. Cool, I'm very happy you have experimented and you discovered your pencils that were waiting so long in the box. And I was like, wow, finally someone wants to draw an experiment with us. Yeah. And so, um. Also, you can say, okay, I want a very uh, bright painting or I want a really uh, maybe pale, you know? So it also depends maybe on your mood. And let me also maybe tell you a little bit about the abstract art because abstract yeah. art is something, yeah, still even nowadays is a bit um, controversial. Like some people don't understand it. And this is actually really the reason why often people don't like abstract art because they don't understand it. But this is normal in the way we don't have to understand what the other artist wants to say with abstract art because abstract art is just about the feelings. If, if we take a look at the painting where... Um, it's clear there are like people sitting or walking or the house, the boats. We understand it. There is the sea, there is the boat or uh, the vase with flowers, fruits, no questions, yeah? But once it gets more abstract, yeah, we, we can't uh, name it, let's say. And... Um, and this is why the people, they, they get confused. Um, but you just have to be more open and your reaction to abstract art can be different. You Maybe like you don't care, you looked at it and it g gave you like no emotion. But it could be you looked at it and it gave you some feelings or some memories or association you look at it oh it reminds me of the uh, sunny day somewhere that actually can be also different from what um the artist wanted to say for artists it could be different and this is also like your painting for it will for be also interesting. You can, drama. yeah you can for experiment artists. and once you finish today's painting you can show it to someone and then, uh, ask... you know, I'll tell you a little uh, thing I, that I I just found out. Mm -hmm. If you may, I have ultramarine. Mm -hmm. If you put it just some uh, with just enough water, you can make a purple color. 
But of course, yeah, also definite today is our experiment with colors. Also mix it. it. Yeah, you can use it pure. So today we we even simplify a bit our uh, work today because we just we are about I color mean, today. Like, not on the plate to place the uh the color like you know. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the plate it's called palette. So this is the, the, the place so where you make... I'm only like putting like dots on the painting and then like with the brush it like expands the little dot turns into like a square or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you can also put the paint also straight to the painting. Why not? Yeah. Um yes. like I'm now testing what color I'll get for brightening the paint. In violet. Wow, that's a good color. Mm -hmm. I think you should try. Ah, uh, you mixing like vi make making watery violet and ultramarine. It's a very good color. Yeah, nice. What's gonna be next? That we're gonna do. I have a question. What we're gonna be painting like uh, next week? You mean? Yeah. Um. For the next week, I think I was planning also one painting. Uh, I can show it to you. Uh, unless you also have your wishes, then we can. No, no. No? Well, I had maybe a little bit of a thing like, I don't know, like, you know something. Um, I think... Um, I had a question. Uh, I know that there's like a painting, but I don't know what it's called. There's like uh, someone like screaming mm -hmm. with his hands on the head. And... Okay. Um, I can't like think of this painting now, um, but you can always like send me later. Um... Yeah, the image, and of course we can. Um, yeah, work with this. I'm always, I'm always happy when you say what you want to paint, and I'm very happy to do the 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 lesson on it because I think you always actually need... what you will play having next next week. Yeah, yeah, the, um, yeah. So on Saturdays we are painting. We always take some famous artwork and then we yeah, we paint it, we talk about it, we talk about this artist. And so on Thursdays we take like for imagination paintings. Yeah. And on yeah, and on Wednesdays when we meet on in our Wednesdays group, then it's more about like some other fun tasks, let's say that are not connected to art history. Yeah. But today, like in, in general. Saturdays, we want to explore different styles and... Um... Okay, so we were asked, I, I actually wanted to know what we, we were going to play next week. Next week, you mean the Wednesday? Uh, no, I this, meant... This Saturday? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, give me a moment, I'm gonna... Whatever painting that I had in mind, I'm gonna show, no rush. Let's concentrate now on our colors and shapes. And... Um... Okay, I'm using more of the pink tones and purple tones. I really like, uh, like drawing little dots on the painting first and then like, with the brush, like expand the little dots and connect them, and then they make like a square. Nice. You already told me. But why can't I repeat it? <laughs> I will also uh, do it now, like you say, with the dots, so the rest can also see. Uh, it's it's a good yes, it's a very good way to do. You see, it, this is fun about abstract art. There is no right and wrong. 
Yes. There is right and wrong when, let's say, your aim is to do realistic painting. Then, yes, there are some rules about light and shadow, or like perspective rules. So if you want it to be realistic, you need to follow those rules. But in our... I saw it, like on YouTube that there's going to be like a painting lesson. Like yeah. a flower bucket. Or flower the bucket. cat with, with the starry with... nights, like the galaxy thingy. Mm -hmm. And there's like a cat. Uh -huh. Okay. I really like that. Okay. Always, uh, if, if you see something, you can, um, uh, through your mom, you can uh, send this image to me. And I, I would be very, very happy to um, to paint it. Yeah? One little tip. Remember, you can also leave here white spots. It doesn't have to be all colored. White is also the color. And you can either just leave the paper white or not. Here he like he colored also it's white. Not, it's not a, too much white. Or it's going to be like black and white again. Painting like <laughs> Well, I mean, it can be very, very different. Uh, I really huh? like uh, graffiti arts, not like the coloring, but like graffiti. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm maybe one day we... how to make a. I'm gonna tell you easy tip how I make some dots yeah. when I make a black good... and white tree. Mm -hmm. Just I'm gonna use. I just put some paint on. For me, yellow is a hard color to like, uh, pump, like push it out from this little bottle. It's like a bit hard. I'm just now making the little, little dots. Oh yeah, the dots, I forgot about the dots. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I just somehow I feel it's, I got used to palette because there I have more control. Uh, but yeah, let, let's do the dots on the paper. Mm -hmm. I think I'm somewhere going to add a little ladybug. Oh, that's sweet. Of course. So if we say that uh, it's spring, definitely. But in the end, you can also give your own name. Maybe it, it's going to turn out something really uh, uh, different. So. I accidentally... Ruined mine. You can call the ruined spring. <laughs> That's already a bit also philosophical. But first, it's um with acrylics, nothing is ruined. Remember the secret. You just wait till it's dry. So just go and paint other uh, rectangle, other uh, triangle, and then you come back to let's say ruined part. And it's so easy to paint on top. Uh, so, uh, yeah. For me, like, uh, some colors are missing. I mean, like, I added red, yellow, and black. But now I'm going to add a little bit of green. It needs to be red spring anymore. The dots, the dots. Oh, yeah, that's how you do the dots, and then you're like coloring your ten. Yeah, but that's actually uh, thank you for this. It's uh, cool because I also get not only the, the color, but you can also get the shape. Yeah? And your squares doesn't have to be colored like really evenly. Somewhere you can leave more, let's say, transparent paint. Somewhere you can have. I'll try mix. I try mixing it. Green, so green and yellow. Cool, yay! Green and yellow also yeah, always gets a good mix. I need it. I really like like putting in the painting the green color and then squeezing it out. It makes it really smooth. Mm -hmm. My sister ruined the painting. She. Put the dot where I didn't want to put the dot. I 
Nothing gets ruined. You just need to wait to, to, to dry, and then you can color. Yes, color. thank you, Audrey. Mm. This is just to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have a bit yeah. more patience. And acrylics are drying so quickly. So basically, just go do the other side of painting. And my, my whole color thing is like almost everywhere is green. Why not? Mm -hmm. well, 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 while I was putting some brown so I can make some dots on the painting, so I could look just a little colorful. I got a little bubble. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna add brown dots. Remember, you, like also, you can also add um, objects, yes? So if you feel like it should be, let's say, exactly the ladybug, the house, the tree, yeah? because paintings can be also, let's say, half abstract. There is a transition where you use some objects, but you maybe modify them a bit. So like here, we can still, of course, recognize there are trees there. And then all the spots are more like the... Yeah, the ground, um, the division. Some like when you fly with the plane, you see, uh, it's it's divided like this. So. I accidentally like I don't know a lot of days ago or even a year ago. Uh, I remember that I heard like when I really liked uh the story night painting and the artist who made the. Yes, the Van Gogh. Yeah, I. I placed like a lot of like stories about him. Mm -hmm. And I heard that there was like the other story night. There are like two story nights. Oh, interesting. Um I I will admit I haven't heard that there are um uh, more story nights. Um could be, yeah, I need to check it. Mm -hmm. There's like one where we know like the galaxies and then the second one there's like uh people i mean walking over like a bridge and there's like the starry in the sky and there's light mm -hmm. oh, okay just then another uh painting a bit similar but also but van gogh cool yeah i mean van gogh he was really productive so actually he, he had very many paintings and some of them I had like a screen on my phone where's the starry night nice yes because i really like that painting and i still have it hmm. but i really hmm. like it's like moving when you turn your phone like upside down the whole painting is like moving Ooh. and you see this is actually what van gogh he um Try, was trying to do because with his longer strokes he was trying to create this feeling so it worked nice he would be <laughs> happy too because actually if you uh, read about Van Gogh's life it he wasn't okay. that happy. I think I have mine's done I remember the most dramatic thing about him was like he like sliced his own ear and mm. then put it like in a package <laughs> yes this is a famous story about van gogh that's true um because it's it was already a bit like uh towards the end of his life and um let's say he was a little bit mentally unstable and and he had a fight with his friend so another painter Paul uh, Gauguin he came to visit Van Gogh and while it was summer it was all good they were going out together to paint but then uh, the autumn came and it was already cold and they had to stay inside the house and um they're both painters, they're both emotional, different um, 
you know, uh, characters. So they had a fight. And uh, this was also like a little bit uh, connected with this. And yeah. After... I'm done. <gasps> you are done. Ooh, I'm excited to see. I'm excited. Fast. To... I'm, I'm a pretty I'm fast still... painter. <laughs> I know, guys, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to add a lot of white spots left. <laughs> Yeah, but remember that there can be white left, why not? And can, maybe also it's like your way of saying, okay, white spots are the winter, the winter is going away. The The spring slowly is coming in. Um, so maybe it's just really early spring when there is still snow. Or maybe it's already um, a more... Like, um, the winter, like jumping into snow piles if I'm very good dressed. <laughs> and building snowmen, but I really like when it's summer or uh, spring that you can uh, jump on like trampolines and drive with bicycles. I really like doing that. Well, I say every season has its good things to do. Yeah. So autumn is nice. Every season, yeah. And, and then as you say, it's just about the question about how well you how you're good, well dressed. So winter is fun if you have good clothes and it's not cold. Of course, and you can have lots of fun in in snow and outside. Yeah, so, like I remember last year when it was summer, I was like driving everywhere with my bicycle because we needed like sugar some bread some toilet paper and something mm -hmm. like that so i mean so as it was spring and summer that i can drive with my bicycle and if dad was too like lazy i can drive on the bike that's cool so yeah last time i drive my bicycle it was to buy, uh, like, toilet paper and some things you need. It's good. Uh, You're like... helping, of course. You're helping um, your parents yeah. to get the stuff. Oh, and then I remember I, I was getting two packages for my dad. And then I got into, like, a, a kid store. And mom allowed me to buy, like, a puzzle for my brother. And he really likes it. Cool. Hey, mine. Tell me, tell me about your paintings, guy. Uh, guys, how is it going? Good. It looks like mom or my sister accidentally placed the pencil and what in coloring place where I like you make things that mm -hmm. brush is wet. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> it happens. You know that actually, that uh, we used that already that we made the brushes wet. I have a lot. Oh, I really like, like, uh, uh, there are some like people on in the whole universe who are like using the world's darkest paint to color one of their rooms, and that looks pretty cool. Like everything's pitch black, <laughs> and if you close the door, what's black? Then it's like you you don't know where you even are. Is it the door? Is it the wall? Or is it the other wall? Or you're just um, going nowhere yeah i think it's really cool experience but if it's your room like this every day <laughs> and maybe not not that actually but... i think mine's good just a bit paper is all accidentally fell off mm -hmm. Yay, 
And I don't, and my phone wasn't the same size on every side. Okay, that's, that's okay. As, as we agreed, you are the artist and your main job as artist is to make choices. So, of course, we, we are here and I tell you some tips, some advices, but in the end, it's you the artist and you decide. I do like this or the other way, I take this color or I leave the part something empty. Yeah, so um on the part that's a bit too empty. Just gonna add a little violet brown and just gonna add some wear some whitey white. That's actually a bit mixed. But that will be okay. My painting is like morally like white, but there's a lot of green too. Mm -hmm. I left a lot of white spots, but you like that it's still like it's just the start of the spring. Mm -hmm. So it's like morally like still it's like winter and spring at the same time too. Very nice, and actually it's um. I, I really like when it's like more like, like winter, but there is a lot of snow, but it's, but it's like very, there's like, there's still some snow outside, but it's more like, like already getting into spring. Cool, yeah. Okay, this is I, I know, I, remember, I finished the stew. I just added a little color to the frame. That would look more like... But what about the details, guys? Are you adding, like, houses, trees, something realistic? Or it's purely abstract? I forgot about that, actually. And then it's fine, yes. Um, yeah, remember, no right and wrong in abstract painting. It's about yeah, either... Um, so when you go to the museum and you see the abstract art. So first you can take a look and you just answer it to yourself. Okay, does it give me any feelings, emotions? Maybe you're neutral. You just, okay, go pass, go to the other painting. Or you say, hmm, it reminds me of this, or is it a, like positive feeling? Or maybe like the feeling of something like worried. Huh? And, um, and then you can also go and read what actually artist wanted to say. So sometimes reading just the title can be like, aha. Yeah? And then and in this moment, you start kind of understanding a bit more the language of the uh, painter, what he wanted to say. Um, but, you're, but remember, it's not a must to understand. Yeah? Uh, we don't know the language that the artist used. Yeah? So... Um... But of course, be open. Yeah, uh, the, the artist. Yes, I made a little house and I finished my lady book. Just Ooh. need to add a little face here. Nice. And wings. Mm -hmm. Y'all sure got about them. <laughs> Mine's gonna be happy. Carefully gonna draw a face.
Well, this was our tips. I just need to. I think I'm done. Cool. I'm very, very excited to see how your paintings turned out. Actually, I I'm just gonna quickly check for time with you. Sure. Take your time. I'm I'm taking off the uh, tape because then of course white border looks nice and pretty. And still, I feel I would like to add some, um, let's say, realistic, some object. Uh, still can decide the tree, the house, or maybe something else. Maybe maybe the birds that's flying over the... Nice, the birds that are coming back from winter uh, to spring. Although my painting is a bit too, too colorful for early spring. The birds are probably already back. Um, there is another um, tip I can show you. So for example, maybe it turned out too bright and you wanted to make it a bit more pale. Very easy, clean well your brush, take clean white, and then you can do it a bit more watery. Yeah, so you just on the palette. So if don't take it like dry it's going to cover completely but if i take um a bit more water let's say mm, what color should i do what shape here yeah and so uh, i have a question tell have me. you ever tried lightening ultramarine and violet oh yeah, I think so. It, it becomes a very beautiful color. I, um... Yes, that's, that was our, like, one of my favorite colors. Today, this is your top mix. Very nice. Hmm. Yeah, so here is the tip. You can also lighten, like, straight on the painting. You just take uh, white. So let's say I don't want it so bright. And um, so you can do it also. Hmm. Um, yeah, so maybe still again this a bit more snowy a bit more also another tip if let's say you did a painting and it looks all too colorful like whoa like and you want it to look a bit more calm adding somewhere like gray in between so gray, brown, so those neutral colors, they will always like give a little bit better balance uh, between uh, the colors. So sometimes it happens like, ooh, all too much. Yeah. But still, again, it's all about you as a painter deciding. Um... Oh, the guns disappeared. Okay. Um, okay, one one something, one more thing, something interesting. Mm. Oh, the birds. I want to do the birds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I take I can also take the pencil. And then later if I like it, I can do that. Okay, so I'm thinking, thinking. So I'm also making some 
symbolic shape of the okay, but it works probably with the thing though. And I'm gonna not gonna take black, I'm gonna take brown. Mm -hmm. And a tiny brush. So we remember the trick. If you want to do thin lines, then uh, your paint mix should be a bit more watery and you kind of roll your brush all in and then it's easier to do. Um, if it's too watery, it's, yeah, it can also like a bit take off some amount. Funny, funny birds. Okay, the guys are coming back. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop recording here. I think it looks fun. It, anyway, it's a fun exercise. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. So we're gonna continue chatting here behind the scenes. Okay.